Hallelujah. Go to Ecclesiastes 3. Thank you, Master. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> God is good, amen? Nothing like worshiping the Lord and getting the peace, joy, and righteousness all restored all over again. And he loves when his children come together in worship. And Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, let's speak it together. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep. A time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones. A time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, and a time of war, and a time of peace, and it's a time to cast out devils. Hello. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given tasks with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and, to do, and good, to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is a gift of God. Now, hallelujah. I know that whatever God does, it shall be for whatever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it that man should fear before him. That which he has already been and what is to be has already been. And God requires an account of what is past. There is a timeline for each season. These seasons are not according to the natural law of creation. But the spiritual law of existence. There is timelines that God has for each and every one of us. And in this timeline, you know, we've said before, God's will is God's time. But there is a timeline in it to where it's a process. There's a time of healing. There's a time of prosperity. There's a time of waiting. There's a time of moving. There's a time of doing things. In other words, we must become more detailed in God's timing. In other words, we can follow. One of the things the enemy tries to do is get us into another timeline. When, when we cross over into another timeline, everything is delayed. Everything is delayed. See, so in this timeline that God has for me and you, he's trying to bring us to a place of character, integrity. He's trying to bring us to a place where we are separated from the world. That the only desire and attraction is him, nothing else. Knowing that he's going to bring it all to pass. See, timeline is also a position place for me and you. Now, there are areas where there's a way to identify your timeline. In Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 1. Remember, there's a timeline for each season. The, these seasons are not according to the natural law of creation, but the spiritual law of existence. In other words, it's the law of the Spirit. In Romans 8, verse 1. There is there now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now there's a timeline of the flesh. There's a timeline of the Spirit. Amen? When you begin to walk in a timeline of the flesh, 
it's it nullifies everything. Everything is delayed. You can do whatever you try to do, and you'll have nothing but trouble. Hello? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. An account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement. So there is a requirement for me and you. Of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now there's a, you know, because you pray in tongues doesn't mean you're walking in the spirit. Hello? Hello? There is a process of getting in the Spirit, and that takes worship. That takes what? Worship. <clears throat> Hallelujah. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It is the law of the spirit of life. Supersedes the natural law of creation. Fulfilling the law is required by being led by the spirit and being filled with the spirit. Again, it must start with worship. You must break through to get in. There are people that have never crossed over. They could be believers for 30, 40 years. They've never crossed over in their life. They have no idea what it is to cross over. They've never entered the most holy place of crossover. In Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6 verse 7. Identifying your timeline. In other words, we want to get so sensitive to we're, we're detailed. Amen? We're detailed in the spirit. We're detailed in the spirit. You know, you can go have your car detailed. Amen? And when it gets, when after you pay the dude, man, you're inspecting it. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now that's how people should be in the spirit. In verse 7, what's it say? Do not be what? Deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap corruption. You know, corruption is in peace, joy, and righteousness. But he who sows to the Spirit will reap everlasting life or peace, joy, and righteousness. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, everyone say due season. We will reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do all good to all and to those who are the household of faith. Again, sowing and reaping is a constant parallel timeline. Sowing in the Spirit maintains the timeline of life. Sowing in the Spirit stops the timeline of life. In other words, you don't have favor no more. You work, 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 do all kinds of stuff, and God's favor is not with you. Everything is delayed. Is everybody okay? In a due time, in due time, in the due timeline of a season, we will reap or gather what is released to me and you. In other words, there's some God will release things to me and you. What's it for? To advance us to the next level of maturity. Does everybody understand it? To advance us to the what? Next level of maturity, ability, and trust where God can trust you. So what's he trying to do? He's getting, trying to get us to the next level of maturity, ability, and trust. In a due timeline of season, we will reap or gather what is to be released to us so that we can advance to the next level. In other words, you and I get assignments every single day. Amen? Those assignments must be completed. If they're not completed, the release isn't, it's not there. God says, if you don't do this, I'm not releasing the promise. You can do all you want. 
Because you're not in my timeline, you're in the flesh timeline. You're in a carnal timeline. Setting your mind always on the things of the flesh, always on the things of the flesh, not the things of the spirit. You know, God doesn't want to hear words. Hello? He wants to see. I'll never forget when he said that to me. When I said, and he said to me, do you want to be free? I said, yes. You know what he did? Show me. Show me you want to be free. Took two months and visitation came. But I did whatever I could. I tried to show him the, the best I knew how. James chapter 1. Glory. James chapter 1. Again, one of the things we want to always do in worship is get God's attention. <laughs> you touch his heart, he touches you. James 1, 20, 21. So can you identify your timeline if you're not in the spirit? No way. You'll live a life of assumption and not direction. In verse 21, let's speak it. James 1, 21. Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. Why? Because he's in the carnal timeline. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. In other words, that's a lost identity. The enemy is the first thing he loves to steal is what? Your identity. If you, he compromises your identity, you will shift from the timeline of God into the timeline of the flesh. From the timeline of the spirit into the timeline of the flesh. Is everybody okay? But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, hello, which is the law of the Spirit, and continues in it, is in not a forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Hallelujah. Time. In other words, there, there's got to be a time in it where you and I are, we are self-examining. There's a time of cleansing. There's a time of self-examination for each and every one of us all the time in this. Why? Because we, we want to be in the timeline of the Spirit. We want to be sensitive enough, discerning enough, and detailed enough. Amen? So that we stay in the timeline of the Spirit. Man, in the timeline of the Spirit, again, there's always peace, joy, and righteousness. Amen. No matter what's going on, doesn't matter. You are, you, in other words, you don't go there. You know the play of the enemy. You know his next move. Why? Because the Spirit's telling you things to come. If you're not hearing what things to come, then you're in the timeline of the flesh, not the Spirit. Amen. First Thessalonians 4. First Thess 4. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. Verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. That means grow more and more. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Sanctification. Your separation. Your separation from the world. In other words, God is your number one attraction. Anything else is a distraction. 
your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he rejects us, does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. Abound more and more is to advance without sanctification. <laughs> It'll cross over the timeline into the flesh timeline. And all things will be delayed. Everyone say delayed. When there's delays, 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 it's because God's not in it. Amen? Either that in that because you're not in God's timeline. You're not in the timeline of the spirit. You're in the timeline of the flesh. Everything gets delayed. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. There's a time when God wants you to wait. Amen. But you will never lose your peace, joy, and righteousness. 1 Pete 1. Because there is a time to wait, isn't there? Amen. But if you don't wait and move, then you've gone in the flesh timeline. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Let's speak it together. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you've been grieved by all kinds of crazy trials. That the genuineness of your faith, and remember, faith is your connection. Amen? He's trying to check out to see if, you're his main, if he's your main attraction. Amen? He's trying to find out if, you're his, if he's your fulfillment in everything. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy unexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The time of testing, certain things that have passed, in other words, one of the things God allows happen in our trials is there's many things of our past we call past reactions. Amen? Which God allows to be triggered so they can be exposed. Why? Because these things draw people over back into the flesh timeline instead of the spirit timeline. So God's trying to expose them so you don't get misled again. You must know this to avoid delayed advancement. Amen? You must know these things. How you know sickness is a trial? When you're sick, it's a trial, isn't it? How about disappointment or rejection or even offense? These things are trials. But you can't allow these things to put you into or move you out of the timeline of the Spirit. Why? Because when you're in the Spirit, you know nothing's going to go wrong. And whatever goes wrong, it ain't your responsibility, it's His. Does everybody get that? Why? Everyone say, I'm the property. I'm the property of Christ. He bought me. He owns me. It's not my life. It's his life. So when you're in the timeline of the Spirit, that's constant. That's constant. You're not looking at anything else. It's constant. You may be at work and whatever, but it's still constant. It doesn't matter. You're not distracted. Amen? 1 Peter 4. Why are we in Peter? 1 Peter 4, 12. Let's speak it. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Why? 
You know, I'll never forget when the Holy Spirit said to me, now people think, oh, that's crazy. One day the Spirit said to me, you're going to be afflicted. I said, why? He said, for my glory. I'm telling you, I woke up in the middle of the night in such pain. I was so sick. My body was so, I mean, I'm telling you, I rolled out of bed and crawled on my hands and knees and my wife came. What's going on? This, that, and whatever. Wanted to bring me to the house, but I didn't know. The Lord said, the Lord told me I'm going to get afflicted. I said, when I, what do you want me to do? He said, I, I'm, don't worry about it. I'll heal you. Man, I'm telling you, I had 104 fever and all kinds. My, I, my, I was it just, boom, instantly. That's when I was a baby. God was testing me, training me. He allowed that to happen. And so my wife got up the next morning. She went over to a morning prayer group that we were involved in. And they were praying for me and so forth. And one of the guys came over and rebuked the spirit of fever off of me. And I still couldn't budge. And they kept wanting to take me to the hospital. And I'm, no, 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 no. So finally I gave in. I said, you can take me to a local clinic. But by the time I get there, God will heal me. I couldn't walk to the car. They carried me to the car. They had to dress me. I'm telling you, my body was a, I was a mess. They brought me. They carried me into the clinic. I sat down at the clinic. They brought me into the doctor's office. I'm in the waiting room there. By the time the nurse came to put a thermometer in my mouth, God healed me. Boom, just like that. And they were like, what? afterwards, they're like, what are you doing here? You're fine. Yes, let's go to breakfast. We went right to breakfast. I had scrambled eggs, and I ate like a pig because God healed me. Why? The Spirit told me things to come. He tells us things to come if we're really in the Spirit and listening and hearing, being attentive to those things. He warns us. But how many times did we not hear? Amen? We make mistakes. Okay, so when you make a mistake, don't stay in it. Get the heck out of it. Amen? Repent, get out, put it under the blood, and get back in the spirit. But people stay in their mistakes. And then they stay in the flesh timeline. Not on the timeline of the spirit. Then they become miserable. Hello. Praise God. So there's a time. Uh, 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 do, we, do we speak this yet? Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Anyway, so there's a time to partake of Christ's sufferings also. Let's go to verse 13. But rejoice in the, uh, verse 13, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when, he is when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. For if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he's blasphemy, but on your part he's glorified. But none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, evildoer, as a busybody, in other people's matters, and try and call it sufferings of Christ. Hello, it ain't going to work. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Hello. <laughs> and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will be the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Again, there's a time to partake of Christ's sufferings. He allows us to go through stuff so that we partake of his suffering. Amen? How many of all know that sometimes you, you begin, you, you get into a place where not as grateful as you used to be. <laughs> knock, knock, who's there? Uh, the Lord is no longer guarding your door. <laughs> he stepped aside and let the enemy in. What's he going to do? He's going to allow affliction to come. Why? So it humbles. And then you become grateful. Amen. <laughs> Never look at what you don't have. Thank God of what you have. That's the ploy of the enemy. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40. Okay. 
verse 28. Identifying your timeline. See, when you know what timeline you're in, amen? In other words, certain things that are going on in your life, you know you're in a, what timeline you're in. You know you're in a, the timeline of the, of, of the Spirit. Things are happening, you know. You don't lose your peace, joy, and righteousness. But the enemy's going to try and shift you out of the timeline of the Spirit, compromise it, and put you in the timeline of the flesh. Now you got trouble. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, nor his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who what? Wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles, with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There is a time to wait for the power and strength of God. Amen? Waiting doesn't mean you do nothing twiddling your thumbs. Waiting means you serve. That's what a waiter does. Amen? You sow. You sow. You worship. You sow. You sow till you drop. First Peter, uh, First Peter, chapter five. And to First Peter, chapter five. In verse 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, that's not age associated. It's maturity level. Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Grace. What's grace? The plan of escape. Amen. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in when? Due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Humble, not pride. <laughs> There's a time to seek and a time to rest in the mighty hands of God, so that we can cut loose of all worldly desire. Through the exchange plan. Everyone to say exchange plan. That's what casting your cares on him is. You're exchanging. You're exchanging your heaviness, your oppression, your fear, your anxiety. Whatever it is, your sickness and disease for the stripes of healing, for the joy of the Lord. You make that exchange. It's called the exchange process. It's the exchange plan. People are trying to fight sometimes. When God's always asking, would you mind exchanging that? It's amazing how quickly people go and exchange the wrong size of a shirt or pants, right? Well, exchange your crap. Amen? Get rid of it. Hallelujah. What's it for? Well, humble, not pride. Time to seek, time to rest in the mighty hand. To cut loose of worldly desires through the exchange plan. And due time, God will advance you. You know what? Due time is associated with being consistent. Being what? consistent. You know, it's God's doesn't have drive through churches. Hello? Even though they try to promote them. It's not drive through The church is a building. It doesn't become the house of God until the people of God come. Amen? But one of the things he expects is worship. See, the fragrance is released when you overtake. It's like a friction in the spirit. It's like a spark. It releases. You know, did you ever strike a match or something? You can smell it, right? Well, the aroma that comes from us is when you overcome and the flesh is cooked. Does everybody get it? In worship, where you're just seeking God. 
You're just going after them. You don't care about nothing or anybody, even if you hit the person next to you by mistake. You don't care. Yo, I'm getting your attention. And then what happens? You touch his heart, he touches yours. Amen? And then when you cross over, man, that spark goes up. He gets a fresh aroma from you. That's my son. That's my daughter. I can smell him. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1. God knows your fragrance, not your perfume. That's the flesh timeline, the perfume. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone say glory. Yes. Ephesians 1.15. Let's speak it. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his in inheritance in his saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. Everyone say, I'm the part of his body. A fullness of him who fills all in all. Wisdom without revelation of the spirit will not work. Wisdom of God comes by revelation of the spirit. When revelation comes from God, what does wisdom do? It tells you what to do. Wisdom does what? Tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. It must first come revelation from the Spirit. But how are you going to get revelation of the Spirit if you're not connected? So you'll work on your own wisdom, which is the flesh timeline. And you'll try and figure things out. You'll try and work things out. You'll try and do all kinds of things. You'll sit there and do all. If you're trying to put something together, man, you'll try to... Until you finally stop and you pray in the Holy Ghost. Then you step back and you get into the timeline of the Spirit. Now God gives you the wisdom by revelation. Amen. I can't tell you how many times every morning when I'm praying in the Spirit, He sets my day. He tells me things that I was, I was contemplating. Next thing they come in a vision. They come in a vision. He loves to speak to us in vision. But too many people's minds are too busy everywhere else. He wants us to settle in. Pray in the Spirit. You pray until you connect. Amen? It's important. What a wonderful gift and how many people have neglected that gift. Glory. Is everybody okay? Wisdom without revelation of the Spirit will not have eyes to see. And they will drift into the carnal timeline of deception. Psalm 104. In your timeline, it's important. Man, you know when you're in a time of prosperity. Does everybody under You know what you do? You don't collect. You sow. Why? Because you're in a time of prosperity. God gives you a special time. He knows when you're in a time of harvest. He knows when you're in a time of what, whatever it is. You're in a time of training. You're in a time, you, know, you know these things in your, when you're in a timeline of the Spirit. But if you're not discerning these things, you'll try and do everything but what God tells you. And it won't work. Psalm 104. 
You know when you're in a timeline of wait. You know. You know when it's that time. And you wait. But you serve while you wait. And then something comes. Glory. Sometimes it may take 15 years, but praise God, it will come. I'll tell you what, one day the Lord answered me. I said to him, man, I answered that five years ago. I didn't get a response, you know. <laughs> hey, thank God. You know, I'll take it. Okay, thank you. But it actually was pertaining to something I was getting ready to do. See, I didn't really need the answer then. But I was curious about something. And about four or five years later, whatever it was, it came. Morning prayer. I'm thinking, wow, that's so cool. I was thinking about, and then I realized it was something he was getting pre me, preparing me for something that was going to happen in a few days from that. In other words, we just don't know. But see, we can trust all the way through when you're in the timeline of the Spirit. And when something is delayed, you know it's for your protection. Don't buy that. Don't sell that. Don't do that, you know. But if you're not in the timeline of the Spirit, you're like a roller coaster. Psalm 104, verse 27. He said, these all wait for you, that they may give, that you may give them their food in due season. That's revelation. For what you give them, they gather in. You open their hand, they fill it with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. Again, there's a timeline when you and I are waiting for revelation so that we can gather. To, listen, we sing and praise, amen? We meditate on the things of God. It says here, um, May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I what? Live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked no more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Again, there's a timeline of waiting for revelation, for gathering. We sing and praise. We meditate on his goodness. Romans 5. Romans 5. I used to be Roman. I roamed the earth looking for God's timeline. <laughs> Didn't know I was looking for, though. Hallelujah, Romans 5, verse 1. Is everybody okay? Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, what is grace? God's plan of escape. It's not unmerited favor. You earn God's favor. Does everybody get it? Verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that the tribulation produces what? perseverance, that means endurance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Wow. Trial of endurance to advance in God's character and hope. Amen. We're always going to try to bring us to the next level. Third John. Third John. And then one more scripture.
identifying your timeline. Verse 2, 3 John verse 2, let's speak it. Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper in all things. Does God want you to prosper? In fact, he delights in your prosperity. Amen? As long as it's given glory to him and it comes from him. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So without conversion of the soul, advancing, maturing, it delays things. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. Walking in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey, in a manner worthy of God, you do well, because they went forth for his namesake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. Now, in this again, there's a time of prosperity in all things, in healings, in everything. But you must be in the timeline of the Spirit. And you know when these things are coming. You know what's happening. And when, again, when there's certain things that what we might call interruption you'll know whether it's of the enemy or of God. Because sometimes God will delay and the enemy likes to interrupt. Why? Because people get frustrated and they go from the timeline of the spirit to the timeline of the flesh. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll close here. Second Corinthians 4. And verse 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, do not what? Lose heart. Don't give up. Don't quit. Get off your blessings and assurance and dive in the presence of God. <laughs> Therefore, do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Is it being renewed if you're in the timeline of the flesh? No. It's delayed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but a moment, is working for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, if you're in the timeline of the Spirit. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are not are seen are temporary. Everything's temporary. So don't sweat it. But the things which are not seen are eternal. That's where we're focusing. We're looking through everything, and that's materialism. The material world. It don't mean poo, man. Hello? You can have all the wealth in the world and all the cars and whatever, but, man, if you ain't in the timeline of the Spirit, you're miserable. Peace, joy, and righteousness is in the timeline of the Spirit, not of the flesh. Amen? Now, God is willing to work all things on our behalf. All things. It takes consistency. There's cleansing. There's purification. There's that area where you don't quit. You don't give up. Amen? Why? Because he didn't give up on you. Why would you give up on him? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything. So have mercy upon us and let your grace abound and give us the discernment through revelation that we may have the wisdom and understanding to be more attentive in detail in the timeline and the spirit that we may see what you want us to see, hear what you want us to hear, speak what you want us to speak, and do what you want us to do for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.